you never know what you're gonna find in a music store. You might find something cool. Speaking of cool, if you're interested, you know what to do. Comment below. Hey, Chords and Coffee, coming to you from the store again. Figured we'd pick us out a Taylor guitar because I'm wearing my Taylor shirt. And I thought today would be a great day to talk about three note chord voicings. A lot of times these end up getting called shell voicings. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why they're handy. Let's talk about things you can do with them other than just playing them on your guitar. Let's talk about ways to approach other chords. Let's talk about ways to, uh, also, when you're playing with a lot of gain, it's kind of cool to have some small grouping voicings. And I'm sure we'll talk about some other things too, but three note chords, not triads, but these shell voicings. Now, if you had never heard of that, stay tuned, because the shell voicing is a really, really handy thing to have. I believe piano players are the ones that uh, probably initiated this because they would play a partial of the chord that had color tones to it and then they would just change the bass note and they'd have a different chord look at that all right here we are god look at that thing that's beautiful let me take this tag off here so shell voicings a lot of times the first version of that chord that you learn is a major seven and that, that's what made me think of it the other day. I was playing something. Take my knife out. Come on now. I was playing something like this. Or um, how about a... Kind of a midnight in Harlem deal. I'll show you that I'll show you that but it'll also help set up this shell voicing idea so what you have is is you have kind of a familiar shape you've got the middle finger and we're gonna do this in E for right now cuz I'm gonna show you this midnight in Harlem this isn't exactly the way that Derek trucks plays it Derek trucks by the way if by some chance you had not heard the song midnight in Harlem or the, the sonic mastery of Derek Trucks. Listen, as soon as this is over, as soon, the moment this logs off, go find uh, the Tedeschi Trucks band. Let's see, if you, if you get close on the spelling, I think Google or YouTube will fill in the rest, but T-E-D-E-S-C-H-I, -E -E somebody write down below what that is, but Tedeschi Trucks band. Susan Tedeschi and Derek Trucks. The song is Midnight in Harlem. It's beautiful. My favorite version, the recorded version is awesome, but my favorite is the live at the, I believe it was the 2010 Crossroads, and it's so good. Anyway, um, the, here's the chord. And this is my rendition of it in order, because you can also play this. Um, and that sounds good, but what's nice about this shell voicing, kind of approach. Maximum jangle factor because you get a lot of open ring and strings. So where we're headed is this voicing right here, okay? Uh, middle finger on the seventh fret of the A. Index finger on the sixth fret of the D. And then on the G string, you've got your pinky finger. You could make a strong argument for ring finger. But I think pinky ends up being what you want to do. If nothing else, there's all sorts of little, little things you can do with that ring finger with harmonics and even just hitting another. I mean, you're almost at a E major nine chord. But anyway, that's where we're headed. Okay. And this Midnight in Harlem thing specifically. So I'm going to start. 
could do it this way. In fact, I don't think I'd be mad at you for doing it like this. Index finger on the G string of the fourth fret. Okay. Uh, middle finger is going to be on the D string of the sixth fret. And then uh, ring finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the A. And so you've got four on the, on the G string, six on the D, and then seven on the A, and then everything is open. Very jangly, very rich. And then the next chord you're gonna play is your uh, middle finger, or your index finger on the uh, sixth fret of the D. Middle finger uh, hits the uh, G string of the sixth fret also, and then ring finger stays where he was on the seventh fret of the A. So, an E6 with a ton of jangly open strings. So this, and then for this, this next one, this shell voicing here, you can almost just leave everything where these guys are at and then put your pinky on the uh, eighth fret of the G string, hitting that E flat note, right? So you've got, the pinky comes down, and then lift him off. And then the next part, I went to an open A. And I'm doing this third here. I know this is a little bit of a rabbit hole, but I thought you might like this. So I'm on the fourth fret of the G in the high E. And sliding back down to the second fret with the A open. And you can play the B string open too. So back to the shell voicing thing. That was just a midnight in Harlem for free there. You've got this shape here. This is your major seven shape, right? So again, if I'm playing an E chord, I've got my middle finger on the seventh fret of the A string. I've got my index finger on the sixth fret of the D and I got my pinky on the eighth fret of the G. And everything is open in this case because it's an E. Really pretty, right? So that's how you do a major seven chord. Dominant seven, super easy. All you're gonna do is take your pinky and then you can drop this to where your pinky comes off and your ring finger is gonna come on to the seventh fret of the G string. Right? And then this wants to go to an A chord. So this, we've done these before, uh, but we haven't really thought about it in terms of um, as a particular type of voicing. It's just been more of, hey, this sounds cool, do it. This is gonna be index finger on the low E, fifth fret, and then ring finger and pinky, we're gonna skip the A. Ring finger is gonna be on the D of the sixth fret. Pinky's gonna be on the G of the sixth fret. So right there. There's a little ditty right there. So we've got this, this little E thing I just showed you. Again, middle finger, seventh fret of the A, index finger, sixth fret of the D, pinky on the eighth fret of the G. And then, so just do that for four counts. One, two, three, four. And then pinky drops off. And then ring comes down on the seventh fret of the G. One, two, three, four. And then index comes on the fifth fret of the low E, skipping the A, ring is on the sixth fret of the D, pinky's on the sixth fret of the G, and then to make it minor, basically, I would want to move my index finger and ring finger switch places, doop, just like that, doop. and then ring finger and pinky are going to come down here on the fifth fret of the D and the G, and then back to that, right? So, what good are these things? These are fantastic if you are 
needing to find kind of this little meaty middle ground to where you're not in the way of um, anybody. You know, or how about this? If you're sometimes, especially if you're in a three piece, one of my favorite configurations for guitar music is guitar, bass, and drums, just a three piece band. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, one school of thought is everybody do as much as you can to kind of fill the void. You know, like there's a lot of, you know, like if you listen to some live, you know, especially some of the cool bootleg cream stuff that's out there, you know, and there's moments where, you know, Ginger Baker is just kind of all over the place and Jack Bruce is doing stuff and Clapton is solo on top. And that sounds awesome. Early government mule too. Um, you know, they had those kind of jam sort of glacial that where they stretch out and just kind of get out there. But also it's cool to be really tight and to have intentional space, right? And sometimes you just need some small chords to do that. And these are really fun. So you've got, here's a major chord, here's a dominant seven, here's another major and then a minor. And then here's another uh, minor shape. So this is like on a D minor here. And this would be um, ring finger on the fifth fret of the A, not doing anything on the low E. And then index finger on the third frets of the D, and then pinky on the fifth fret of the G. And if you drop your pinky, if you drop this uh, middle down to the, uh, on the G string on the fourth fret, you kind of have options how to name that. You can think of that. Is G7 over D to C major 7. And then here's just that C major 7 shape. Here's, this is another little exercise for you. Middle finger on the third fret of the A, index finger on the uh, second fret of the D, and then pinky on the fourth fret of the G. And then make it a six. So we went from major seven to a C6. And that's just gonna be uh, middle finger, or ring finger takes over where middle finger was. So ring finger on the A string, third fret. Index finger stays on the D string of the second fret. And then middle finger comes down on the second fret of the G. So, this is like a D minor, and with the B in, on top there, it's really like a D minor six. I know some of these chords kind of sound like, whoa, what is this weird chord? But trust me, what I'm trying to show you is with just three fingers touching this thing and a few open strings, there's some beautiful chord voicings, right? Hopefully you'll write something cool out of this. You never know, okay? So, ring finger, fifth fret, A string, index finger, third fret, D, pinky, fifth fret of the G. And if you leave the um, high E and the B ringing, it's like a, a, a D minor six with a ninth on top. And then if you drop that pinky off and then put the um, middle finger down on the fourth fret of the G, it's like you're doing a G7 almost, right? Well, how, how am I getting G7 out of that? I'll show you. You've got an F, you've got a B, and you've got a D. If I just put a, a G in the bass, it would be G7, right? But since it's not, it just sounds like another D minor six. If you happen to see the last lesson that we did, the, one, the MRE lesson, the music theory, ready to enjoy, the no man left behind lesson, and we talked about how D minor has a lot more in common with G7 than you might think. So watch that if, if I'm losing you here. So you got a G7 over a D to this C major seven. Middle finger on the third fret of the A. Low E, nothing's happening. Index finger on the second fret of the D and then pinky on the fourth fret of the G string. And I, I would totally ring that B and that E open. And then um, index finger, or excuse me, uh, pinky comes off, and then ring finger takes the place of middle finger, boop, and then index finger stays where it's at, and then middle finger hits the second fret of the G. If 
you make a loop with this and play C major over this, Also, with these shapes, one of the things I really like to do, if we take us back up here to E, is hit these little harmonics here. It's kind of a cool effect. You can wear that out, like you can do it too much, but it is kind of a cool thing just to do every so often. All I'm doing is, again, middle finger, seventh fret, A string. Index finger, 6th fret, D, pinky, G string of the 8th uh, fret. Now, ring finger is going to hit the harmonics on the 7th fret of the B and the E. And you might just practice that. Make sure you've got those harmonics. I'm barely touching right on top of the 7th fret, just right on top of it. And so... It's kind of a cool little pretty thing to do while you're sitting on a chord like that. And you can move it around. So if I... If you can get them on the third fret, more power to you, I can't. <laughs> and I don't even know if they would be the right note. It's getting in that Jeff Beck harmonic mastery territory right there. There it is. Yeah, it's way up there. It's hard to hear. But you get the idea, right? It's a it's it's a it's a fun little trick and if if kind of peppered in there at the right point while you're playing. It's a nice way that it might be, you know, at the top of a chorus or the top of the second verse or something like that. It's kind of a cool thing. So these shell voicings. So one more time, here's, here's a, a, a like, I'm gonna give you four of them just so you have them. So here's that major seven one we just did, right? And then there's the dominant seven. And then there's this major seven that we did. And then you can make that a dominant seven. How would I do that? So let me give it to you one more time. No man left behind here, or a woman. No one left behind. So we've got a middle finger here on the A string of the seventh fret. We've got our index finger on the uh, blue sixth fret of the D. Pinky is on the eighth fret of the G. And then we're gonna take the pinky off, drop the ring finger down on the seventh fret of the G. And then index finger is gonna come on the fifth fret of the low E, skipping the A. We've got the ring finger and the pinky both on the sixth fret of the D and the G, right? And then to make that a dominant seven, ring finger comes off and then middle finger comes down on the fifth fret of the D. So you've got index on the fifth fret of the, of the low E, skipping the A, um, middle finger on the fifth fret of the D, and then pinky on the G string of the sixth fret. It's nice when you can have those jangly ringing strings like that. And then that wants to go to this uh, D major seven. And you can make it D minor seven like we did earlier. There's a lot of different cool things you can do when you haven't really gotten into the half of it. I just wanted to kind of crack open the can on these shell voicings to see what you thought about that. There's some really cool things that you can do too when you start thinking about how the chords relate to one another, like we talked about last time, where you have, like, for example, like the D minor, how that relates to G, right? Or F major seven, how that relates to a G seven, right? If I'm playing this F major seven shell voicing on the eighth fret, doing that same thing, and somebody else is playing a G, you can already ha hear how that sounds like a really, um, well, it's a tasty G7. It's a tasty G7 chord, you know? And that's the whole name of the game, right? Is finding ways to um, get more out of what we already know, right? 
Hey, if you like these shell voicings and you want to talk about it some more, or specifically, if there's something like a chord progression or like a, um, hey, how would I use this, you know, um, in a blues or something like that? I don't know. Just comment below. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to help in whatever way I can. And I got to tell you, I look forward to making these videos every week. If you don't know that by now, let me tell you right now, I do. I appreciate y'all so much. You're the most encouraging guitar community on the internet. And that's saying something. Keep up the good work, friends, and we'll see you next week for another Chords and Coffee.